All right, everybody, get ready. Because today we are doing a deep dive into Taiwan's tech scene. Yeah. They are doing some really interesting things, mm -hmm. especially with AI and chip manufacturing. And we've got some pretty wild sources. Okay. So get this. Taiwan is actually pretty open to using nuclear power to like fuel all their AI ambitions. Wow. And also there's news that the iPhone 18 Pro is going to be the first one to feature TSMC's brand new two nanometer chip. Wow. That's pretty wild. Yeah. So, so what is the connection here between all these things? And, yeah. And like, what does it even tell us about Taiwan's place in the global tech landscape? Well, it's really interesting because I think what we're seeing here is Taiwan kind of quietly yeah. and strategically positioning themselves as a tire powerhouse. And I think the nuclear power angle is a really great example. Yeah, you wouldn't normally think like AI and nuclear power. Right. Exactly. But it makes sense when you think about just how much energy this stuff uses. Totally. It's a ton of energy. Like, I remember when I tried to run some AI image generation software on my old laptop, the thing was like burning up. It felt like a nuclear reactor. Oh, yeah, for sure. These GPUs are incredibly powerful. Yeah. And they suck a lot of juice. They do. So what's happening is that Taiwan is really hitting this energy dilemma. Mm -hmm. Right? They've got this AI industry that's booming all these GPUs sucking down power. Yeah. And they need a really stable and reliable power source. And I think they're not afraid to consider some options that other people might not even want to touch. Right. Okay. So they need more power. But why nuclear? Like, isn't that kind of controversial? Well, yeah, it is controversial. But I think Taiwan's approach here is really unique. Okay. They're not just like pulling these old reactor designs off the shelf. Right. They're looking into this new technology called pebble bed reactors. Huh? And these are much smaller. They're modular. And they're actually designed to be meltdown proof. Meltdown proof? How is that even possible? Well, basically, you can imagine these tiny little uranium pellets all encased in graphite. It's like this super high-tech gumball machine. Okay. And this design allows it to passively regulate the nuclear reaction, mm -hmm. which pretty much makes it impossible to have like a runaway chain reaction. Oh, wow. It's really a huge step forward for safety and efficiency. So this helps with the waste concerns that a lot of people have about nuclear power, too. Right? Totally. These reactors actually produce a lot less radioactive byproducts. Okay, so they're using this cutting-edge nuclear tech to power their cutting-edge AI industry. Exactly. Like yeah. future on top of future. Yeah. I mean, I know that a lot of people are going to be concerned about nuclear power no matter what. Yeah, of course, public perception is always a challenge with nuclear power. Mm. But what's interesting about Taiwan is they're taking a very transparent approach. Yeah. They're really focusing on public dialogue and making sure that everybody is on board. Mm -hmm. They're not rushing into this. They're doing their due diligence. That's good. Making sure that all the safety and environmental concerns are addressed. So very strategic. Let's move on to this two nanometer chip from TSMC. Okay. This is big news, especially because it's going to be in the iPhone 18 Pro. Yeah, it's going to be the first time we see this chip and it's going to be exciting. So what makes this chip so groundbreaking? Well, I think this really shows just how much Taiwan dominates in the semiconductor industry. Okay. I mean, shrinking a chip down to two nanometers while increasing performance, yeah. that's mind blowing. Yeah. To give you some context, like a human hair is about 80,000 nanometers wide. Wow. So we're talking about transistors that are like basically at the atomic level. It's crazy. It is. How do you even make something that small? Right. And what's it going to do for me? Like, mm -hmm. I'm just the average person using my iPhone. Well, it's a really complex combination of engineering and manufacturing techniques. Okay. TSMC is using something called extreme ultraviolet lithography, or EUV. Okay. And this is like a super precise laser etching process. Gotcha. And for the user, this means you're going to get faster processing speeds, longer battery life. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be able to run even more demanding applications on your phone. So my phones can be way better. Basically, yeah. But what I think is so interesting is that they're not making a big deal about this. Right. Like TSMC is doing all this quietly. Yeah. You don't see the hype that you see with other big tech companies. Yeah. And I think that's a really important point. Mm -hmm. I think that's the key takeaway here. Okay. Taiwan lets their results speak for themselves. Uh. They're not interested in these flashy PR campaigns. Yeah. They're just focused on delivering real, tangible advancements mm -hmm. that have a global impact. Okay, so we've covered Taiwan's approach to nuclear power. Their two nanometer chip breakthrough. Right. 
What's next in our deep dive? Well, next we're going to explore how these two things that we've talked about mm -hmm. that seem totally separate, yeah. how they're actually interconnected and how they show us Taiwan's strategic approach to innovation. Okay. And really their growing influence on the global tech landscape. Awesome. I'm excited to hear it. Yeah. So we've seen how Taiwan is really pushing boundaries in both AI and chip manufacturing. But what I find really interesting is how they're doing it all under the radar. Yeah, it's like they're playing a whole different game. Right. While all these other countries are out there hyping up their latest innovation, Taiwan is focused on the long game, like mm -hmm. building this really strong foundation for technological advancement. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They understand that real progress isn't about like quick wins or flashy announcements. Right. It's about consistent effort. It's about collaboration. It's about being willing to embrace new ideas, even if they seem a little bit controversial at first. Yeah, like the whole nuclear power thing. Exactly. That's a bold move. It is. It's like that story, that the tortoise and the hare. Oh, yeah. You know, everybody else is trying to sprint ahead and Taiwan's just slowly and steadily making progress. Love that analogy. And I think their success with that two nanometer chip really proves this point. It's not just like a one-off breakthrough, right? It's the culmination of years and years of investing in research and development and fostering this really collaborative ecosystem that involves the entire semiconductor industry. You mentioned earlier that TSMC is using this technique called vertical stacking. Right. Can yeah. you explain what that is and why it's important? Yeah. So basically imagine building a skyscraper instead of just like a single story building. Okay. By stacking the transistors vertically, they can fit way more components into the same amount of space. Oh, wow. And that leads to a huge boost in performance and efficiency. So it's not just about shrinking the transistors. It's about like finding new ways to arrange them. Yeah, it's like a three-dimensional puzzle, but on a microscopic scale. That's wild. It is. And this is what sets Taiwan apart, right? Mm. They're not just following trends. They're actually shaping the future of technology. It's like they've found the secret formula for innovation. Mm -hmm. They're building a system that's adaptable and resilient, and it's always evolving. Cool. What can other countries learn from Taiwan? I think there's a lot to learn. I think Taiwan's story really shows us that l leadership and technology, mm -hmm. it's not about flashy announcements or nationalistic, you know, whatever. Right. It's about fostering this culture of collaboration, yeah. investing in R&D, and just focusing on delivering real results. Substance over hype. Exactly. Action over rhetoric. Love it. I think that's a really powerful message in a world that seems to reward the opposite. Absolutely. Yeah. Taiwan's quiet power is proof that real progress often happens behind the scenes, mm -hmm. driven by this commitment to excellence and a deep understanding of how technology and economics and geopolitics all work together. So we've talked about their approach to energy, their yeah. dominance in chip manufacturing, and how they're quietly shaping the tech landscape. Mm -hmm. But what about the bigger picture? Yeah. How does all of this fit into like the global geopolitical landscape? Well, that's where things get really interesting. Okay, so we've been digging into all of these awesome advancements in Taiwan's tech scene, mm. but we haven't really touched on like the geopolitical side of things. Right. What happens when you have this relatively small island nation yeah. that suddenly becomes like a global leader in something as important as semiconductors? That is the big question, isn't it? It is. It's, it's like they're holding the keys to the future of technology. Yeah. And everybody's watching from governments to these huge corporations. It's like they're sitting on this gold mine of silicon and everyone wants a piece. Yeah. So how are other countries reacting to Taiwan's rise in the tech world? It's kind of a mixed bag. I think... Some countries see Taiwan as this valuable partner, you know, a yeah. source of innovation and collaboration. Hmm. But other countries, especially those that have some historical tension with Taiwan, yeah. they see this tech dominance with a little bit of apprehension. Hmm. So you have this really complex web of economic dependencies and political maneuvering. Yeah. It's not just about the chips themselves. It's about who controls this really important industry. Exactly. Taiwan is the perfect example of how technology and geopolitics are like totally intertwined. Mm. Their decisions about energy, about trade, about research. Yeah. They have these ripple effects that go way beyond their borders. Yeah. It's like a reminder that even when we're talking about this crazy tech stuff, mm -hmm. 
there are these real world consequences and power struggles happening. Absolutely. And for the average person, you know, using their phone, their laptop, their car, even. Yeah. These things are all influenced by these global forces that are at play. It's wild to think about. It is. Something as small as a microchip can have this huge impact on the world stage. Well, that's technology, right? It can disrupt the status quo. It reshapes mm. industries and economies and even international relations. Yeah. And Taiwan is right at the center of it all. So as we wrap up our deep dive into Taiwan's tech frontiers, what's the big takeaway? I think Taiwan's story offers a few important lessons. First, real innovation often happens quietly, mm -hmm. you know, without all the bragging and self-promotion. Second, a strategic long-term vision and a dedication to collaboration and continuous improvement mm -hmm. can lead to amazing results. And finally, technology is not just about gadgets. Right. It's a force that shapes the world we live in. Mm. Everything from politics to economics to our everyday lives. It's a powerful reminder that we should all be paying attention to these technological shifts. Yes. Not just as consumers, but as informed citizens. Absolutely. In this rapidly changing world. And who knows, maybe Taiwan's approach, this blend of quiet determination and technological brilliance, maybe that holds the key to navigating these challenges in the 21st century. Yeah, that's something to think about. It is. As always, we'll put links to everything we talked about in the show notes so you can keep exploring. Great. Until next time, stay curious, and we'll be back with another deep dive into the world of ideas that matter.